Imagine, 150 years ago, you did something slightly careless, and that careless act you did makes it today slightly frustrating to maintain a lawn in the suburbs. We'll come back to this. Gold. For millennia, it's the rock we've all decided is the coolest and best rock. And it should be the awesome, expensive rock. And much of California history is seeped in its rush to find gold. But the California gold rush you learned about in like fourth grade was mostly in the northern part of the state. And Los Angeles at the time was nothing more than a cattle town. Just for reference, this is what the North looked like. And for the South, there's not really pictures of the South. But if you expand outward of LA and look at the larger region of SoCal, you'll find some cool remnants from the Wild West era. Head down to Orange County. It's smack dab in the middle of the suburbs. Outside of Laguna Beach, yes, like Lauren Conrad Laguna Beach, is the Dripping Cave. In the 1850s, this was the secret hideout of the Flores gang. This is where they hid from authorities between robbing coaches that were going from LA to San Diego. Heading east and up to the San Bernardino Mountains, taking a dirt road, you can visit the ghost town of Belleville, which is uh, lackluster. But the one cool thing that's here is the hangman's tree. In the 1860s, this was where frontier justice was carried out. When the victim of a hanging was finally cut down, the branch the rope was hanging from was also cut off. You could see how many were hung from here. I've also always on people using selfie sticks, but uh, I now get it. They are the greatest thing on earth. Like how fun is that man? Heading north, outside of Bakersfield, built in the 1870s is Tehachapi Loop, which is a railroad helix where a train passes over its own self. Seeing this makes the future data me go yes. Built as a solution to the mountain's steep grade, when it opened, It was an engineering marvel and the talk of the world. But by far, the coolest thing from this era, it's about five minutes away from Riverside in the suburbs, feral donkeys. These donkeys worked in the mines during the gold rush. And when that went bust, they just carelessly let them go. And their generations of offspring have been living in the hills here ever since. Do a quick Google search and you can find various videos of them wreaking havoc in the suburbs. In that slightly careless act of letting them go 150 years ago makes it slightly hard to maintain a lawn in the suburbs when they're constantly munching on it. I told you. <laughs> yeah, you definitely cross the street and I will not. <laughs> So these are wild feral donkeys that have been sort of uh, forced to live in this patch of dirt. (laughs) I think it stands to reason that they're pissed and they look pissed looking at me and uh, it's making me nervous. When I found out there was a historic feral donkey population, I realized something. Most history is dead or abstract, burned down, or just like an idea or boring. But this is physical living history of a time long gone. And how often can you go out and tangibly touch the past? I had to visit. Also, how often could you go out and tangibly feed and possibly hopefully pet the past? I think they have very kind eyes and they look very friendly to me. I think that kind of one donkey chomp and then your, your opinion of the animal is permanently adjusted. Um, also, they look friendly to me, but there's a multitude of websites saying you should never approach them. And I also have uh, quite an established history of maybe getting a little too close to animals from time to time. You have your check mix. Uh, he's coming towards us. Yeah, throw him an almond. You guys want this? Throw it in the grass. Oh my god. (laughs) So, in the defiance of those websites' warnings and in the interest of safety, I invited my danger avoidant friend, comedian Mecky Leeper, to come meet the past with me. Let's be honest. Like, if you think any of these donkeys turned on you, do you think you come out alive or not? If one really wanted to hurt me, I, I would probably be. There's nothing you can do towards them because they can just jump up and you're instantaneously You know what I mean? They can clobber you because like the only thing I can think of that you can do is probably, you know, jam your thumb in its eye. But the thing is, (laughs) 
I'm here ready to die, and I haven't thought about that at all. You're thinking of mutilating these things or you give them rice cakes? Uh, so yeah, you're ready to uh, interact with living history? No. Uh, are you as ready as you're ever going to be? Yeah. Well, what are we gonna feed them? So I have a whole array of uh, rice cakes that I bought from Vons on the way here. Okay. Uh, I don't know what donkeys eat. I did not do the research on that. <laughs> um, but they're all standing up. They don't seem scared. This is your scientific estimation? You're like, I, well, <laughs> they're standing, so that's good. I feel like it's important that everybody knows that Austin didn't tell me much about this at all. And he hasn't researched these animals, and he wants me to put my hand into their mouths. Yes. Yeah, see? Look at they're coming. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll step out in front. They're kind of like giant dogs. Yeah, see? What makes you say that? I feel like a lot of the a lot of the things you're citing here. See, just... Look how chill this <laughs> is. You're afraid of this guy? Well, I... look at this. Okay. Yeah, he hates that. Dogs like that. <laughs> dogs are into that. All right, just, give me, give me one. Yeah, go for it. See? I don't know. God. Okay. How what? is this making you feel that there's like a a semicircle of wild animals closing in on me? How does that make me feel? Yeah. Not good. Maybe, hang on, let's try. I'm gonna just see what happens if, okay. If they ever get like too near, we can, as long as you don't run out of rice cakes, we can always lead them away. <laughs> the idea that you're coming up with this strategy on the fly, <laughs> it's uncomfortable, to say the very least. Let's do one of those right there, and one of those. I feel like the fact that we're backing up is giving them too much confidence. Oh no, no, okay. no. Okay, I'm gonna drop these right here and then we'll back up. And then Backing we'll make away, our run for it and not Never get to my car. Here you go. So, what is your uh, impression of donkeys having just met them? No thanks. These guys, terrifying. Cool. Side note, as we put ourselves in possible danger for this historical interaction, unnoticed in the background the entire time there was a family with young children and zero fear feeding them also. They also took safety precautions, wearing masks not to catch the Delta variant from the donkeys. So it was still up in the air to us whether it was safe to feed them or not. But after some internet research, I found out that you feed them carrots, not rice cakes. Like, duh. <laughs>